Hey there and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to deploy a payload project together with a MongoDB database on our own VPS using Coolify. This will make you independent from any third parties like for example MongoDB Atlas or other platforms that might provide you with a MongoDB database. Now, just to get started with why would you choose MongoDB? Well, Payload used to be a MongoDB only framework. Um, they just recently added, you know, support for a Postgres database. And there are a few things like, for example, the point field currently only works on MongoDB and not Postgres. Also in Postgres, since it's a SQL database and not a no SQL database, you have some sort of risk for data loss if you change a collection schema in Payload because that might overwrite the schema in the database. And if you, let's say you have a name field and a slug field, and by mistake, you remove the slug field and you overwrite the schema. And now you add it back, but all the data, all the slugs are lost because the schema has been overwritten. Now payload warns you about this stuff. And it's, to be honest, it's hard to mess it up, but the risk is still there. And you don't have this risk with MongoDB. Also, uh, MongoDB Compass is a great way to just access your database in a graphical user interface. And apart from that, we just, you know, like MongoDB. Um, we use it for a lot of projects. It's working very, very well, especially also on MongoDB Atlas in combination with the full text search. It's just very powerful. But like I said, you can also use Postgres with Payload and you can also deploy Postgres on Coolify. If you want to see a video about deploying Postgres on Coolify, please let us know in the comments below so we know if this is a requested topic. Now, just another short talk about why would you want to self-host your database? So MongoDB Atlas in and of itself is a great product. It provides a great free tier, which is very generous um, enough for the majority of projects. It also includes some things like, for example, Atlas search, which is a full text search with support for fuzzy matching. So you can, you know, correct typos and stuff. You know, it also has vector search, it has backups, um, but it can get expensive if you have larger amounts of data. And if you, for example, want a dedicated cluster, so on a dedicated server, they start from 50 bucks upwards a month which can get quite expensive. Now on Coolify, for example, you can get an eight gigabyte RAM with gigabytes of database storage. Um, and it's still a shared CPU, but it's very, very powerful um, for nine bucks a month, which is equal to the M2 plan on MongoDB Atlas, basically the cheapest plan that exists, which is just, you know, pretty, pretty weak. So it will give you a lot more for the money that you pay, obviously you have to manage stuff yourself. Another advantage is that if you host your database on the same server or in the same network as your application, you get super low latency because it doesn't even have to, you know, the traffic from your server or your payload application to the database doesn't even have to go through the, you know, public internet. It's just on the same machine basically. And last but not least, if we're talking about GDPR compliance and stuff, obviously self-hosting is always the cleaner solution. So let's get started by setting up our payload project. This is very straightforward. I just opened up my terminal in a folder that I already created. This is a repository. I just set up on GitHub, it's empty and I cloned it onto my local machine. Now the only thing I have to call is npx create payload app at beta because it's currently version three is currently still in beta. Now it will ask me for a project name. I'm going to call it payload Mongo test. I'm going to choose a blank project template MongoDB. And for now I'm just going to, you know, leave the local connection string that I'm going to replace later. So let's just install the dependencies and wait for a minute. And as soon as that is done, I can open it up in VS code. I can see it initialized it in a subfolder to get rid of that subfolder. I can just, you know, drag them all out and delete it. And now we have our local payload project 
running. Before we spin up our database in Coolify, there's one thing I forgot to show you in the last video where we set up Coolify in a more advanced way with one server that runs Coolify and multiple other servers that are basically remote controlled that contain our projects. So what I forgot to tell you was if you go into servers and this is the server that we created, the projects one server, we can add a wildcard domain here. Now, in our case, what I added, what I added was the wildcard, so the asterisk dot projects dot all about payload dot com domain. So I'm going to click on save and for the wildcard domain here, I'm going to enter exactly this HTTPS projects dot all about payload dot com. Going to click on save. This has been updated. Now what this does is whenever you create a project, um, if you, for example, deploy it on Vercel, you're used to getting you, to automatically getting um, preview URLs. So you don't have to for every project, uh, you know, create a DNS record pointed to the server. This will do the same thing. So this will give us a signed domain for every project that we deploy in this server. It will be some random string dot projects dot all about payload dot com. But you're going to see how this works in a second. So let's now create our database, which is super straightforward. We're going to create go to projects. We still have this test project here. I'm just going to add a project called payload mongo test going to click on continue. Now we only have the production environment for now. That is fine. And we're going to add a new resource. I'm going to choose MongoDB. And for the deployment, like I said, we could in theory deploy it on the same server that Coolify is running on, but we want to deploy it on a different server. This is just good practice to keep things separated. So I'm going to select projects one. And I won't config anything here. I'm just going to click on start and that will basically SSH into our remote server and start the MongoDB database there. So let's see if this is running. It seems to be running. And as you can see, we already have a Mongo URL internal. Now this database is currently not accessible through the internet. So for example, on my local host here, I couldn't access it. That's because we currently only have an internal connection string that we can only use if we connect from the same server or the same internal network. If you want to basically make the database publicly available to the internet, you have to select a public port here. We can just say 5432 and I have to check make it publicly available. And this will, if we click on, oh, we don't even have to click on save, this will automatically create a Mongo URL that is public. And this is the URL that we are going to use to connect, for example, from our local machine or any external server. So let's just test this out real quick. I'm going back into my environment variables. And instead of the local URL, I'm going to paste in our remote URL. So let's start our development server by running npm run dev. And if we visit localhost 3000 slash admin, this is important. And wait for a bit to compile and initialize. This will now greet us with the welcome screen. And we need to create our first user, which I'm just going to do real quick. Now we're in the admin panel. So the database connection seems to work fine. To view our database, we can use the MongoDB Compass tool to remotely access our database in a graphical user interface. So instead of the local connection string, I'm just going to paste in our remote connection string. And as you can see, it gives us a warning, TLS SSL is disabled, which means that the traffic between our server and the database will not be encrypted. Now, this is one drawback of deploying MongoDB with Coolify at the moment, that out of the box, you don't get SSL encryption. 
which you do get, for example, if you're using MongoDB Atlas. This is not as important as you might think, um, but I'm going to explain this later. So for now, let's just click on connect. And as you can see here, it's using the default name that payload chooses for the database, which is called test for whatever reason. But if we access users here, we can see we have our user that we just created. Let's now go ahead and deploy our project on Coolify. So I'm just going to push a init commit. And now I have to go back to Coolify. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy the internal connection URL and save it for later in my notes here. And because we want to enable automatic deploys, which means that as soon as I push to GitHub, Coolify should redeploy my applications. I need to create and set up a GitHub app. To do this, I'm going to go into sources. I'm going to click on add source. I'm just going to rename it um, GitHub. And for the all organization on GitHub, I'm going to choose all about payload because that's the organization where our current repo lives. So I'm going to click on continue. And it says you must complete this step before you can use this source. I need to click on register now. And this will give, uh, this will redirect me to GitHub where I need to use two factor authentication to successfully confirm my login. So just give me a second. As soon as that is approved, I can now create a GitHub app here. I just need to click on create GitHub app. Now the name is actually invalid. So I have to rename it AAP minus GitHub. So this should work. I can now click on install repositories on GitHub. And now I need to authorize this application to read all repositories in the all about payload organization. Now this is successfully set up and I can now go back to projects to our payload Mongo test project production environment. This is our database and I'm going to create a new resource from a private repository using the GitHub app. I'm going to deploy it on the projects one server and I'm going to choose the only GitHub app that I have initialized. If you have multiple organizations that you want to deploy from, obviously you will need to add multiple of those GitHub apps. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to choose the payload Mongo test repository. I'm going to load the repository. We only have one branch. The port is correct and we're going to use Nix packs to build it. You could also use a Docker file or Docker compose, but we're not going to use it in this video. So click on continue. And now the only thing left is two things. First of all, we need to adjust our health check because as you saw just a few minutes ago, the index path is a 404 error. So the health check won't be successful. You have to add slash admin because that just accesses the admin route. I'm going to click on save. And last but not least, I have to add the environment variables. Now I can click on developer views so I can just paste them in. And coming from a project, I'm going to click copy and paste. So this is where it gets interesting. We can now access the database through the public URL. But since the database is set up on the exact same VPS than our project, instead of the public URL, we can use our local URL. So I'm going to paste this in here. And this brings a huge advantage because that way we can actually close the database for the public if we not, you know, want to connect from it, uh, connect to it from our local host for development purposes. We can close the public connection and that way our database is completely secure. Nobody can can access it from the outside. So I'm going to click on save and I'm now just going to click on deploy. That should start our deploy and let's just wait for two to three minutes until everything has been deployed. All right, the deployment has successfully been completed. 
And now I can show you what the wildcard domain does. If we go back to configuration, as you can see under domains here, we get our random string dot projects dot all about payload dot com. If we go to links here, we can actually access it. Obviously the index page is 404, like I said, but if we go to admin, this should give us the login screen. And if I log in here, our password is not correct. All right. Um, yeah, that was the correct password. And we're now into our admin panel. And as you can see, it connects through the local connection string. So if we go back to our database and we just close the public connection string. So now our database is not publicly available and we refresh, we still can just use the application as we normally could because we're connecting through the internal URL. Now, this will be it for today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comments below. And apart from that, take care and see you in the next video.